Today we're going to look at the Keltec RDBC. Again, most people probably refer to as that one Keltec bullpup featureless rifle because given it an actual name like the Badger or the Space Blaster or, or something we could actually remember would have been too hard. As legislators pass laws on certain types of firearms, the laws usually focus on a cosmetic feature of the gun that has nothing to do with its functionality. So it's become like a game of whack-a-mole. The legislators ban one thing, the firearm industry responds by inventing something entirely new. Since many laws focus on the fact that the gun has a pistol grip, there's a lot of workarounds which include turning your rifle into a break action or eliminating the ability to use that pesky opposable thumb of yours. While these workarounds do keep your AR-15 legal, making them less ergodynamic doesn't make them any safer. In fact, they probably makes it more dangerous. And the folks making these modifications to make their guns legal are following the law. They're not the people you need to worry about. Criminals just don't follow the law. And let's face it, when you spend your life obeying and respecting the law, you become a little resentful when the laws keep changing to try to make you into a criminal. So necessity breeds invention, and firearm manufacturers just eliminate the pistol grip. So once again, you're able to grip the gun properly, you can have removable magazines, no bullet buttons, and you can get back to enjoying shooting a normal-ish rifle again. Welcome back, Tau Fleeter folks. Jeff, the OG, and Danny out here with you on a shiny, shiny, uh, sunny, warm January day. And we've brought you something a little bit new today. Uh, recently, about Christmas time, Mrs. OG uh, surprised the OG with a, a cool little Keltec RDBC. Wow, you have a cool wife. My wife. You know what I got for Christmas? What did you get? A box of cereal? No, I got an electric toothbrush. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd rather have a box of cereal. Do you want to know what I got here, though? <laughs> A box of cereal. No, a leaf blower. Oh, well. I you kid two, you not. You two okay, deserve anyway, each I'm other. Sorry. You two deserve each other. Uh, Mrs. OG is always pretty good about coming up with some pretty nifty gifts and has gotten me quite a few uh, very cool knives and, and other things in the past. So this last uh, winter, I was looking, I was in a local gun shop. I sent her a picture because I stumbled across this Keltec RDBC. A couple of years ago, about two years ago, 2016, um, I was watching a Nothing Funny video, and he saw he was uh, testing out a Keltec RDB survival, very similar to this. And my comment in the comment section was, "Holy crap, that's going to be a very that's going to be a perfect California legal rifle because it does not have a collapsible stock, it does not have a pistol grip, the evil evil pistol grip. This one came with a uh, metal uh, screw-on barrel shroud, which I replaced with a compensator, so fully legal in California." So the overall length of this little, little uh, doodad here is 30.4 inches. So it's legal length. It is semi-automatic firing. It takes AR-15 magazines. So readily available magazines that you can find anywhere. And is a very compact, short little rifle. Perfect little truck gun. So when I saw that a couple years ago, I thought, man, whenever that thing hits the market, it'll make a perfect California legal gun. The cool thing is that in that time, when it was called the Keltec RDB Survival, it had a pencil-thin barrel and a really goofy uh, stand-up front sight. They fixed a lot of that stuff. They've extended this forearm out, gave it a little bit thicker barrel, done away with that sight. It only comes with a rail underneath here. It's got an ambidextrous magazine release, so there's a button on the other side, but a lever on this side. Pop out your magazines nice and handy it's right here. It's got a uh, bolt hold up and you run around back and lock it open like that. You notice that the round ejected back here next to my uh, armpit or next to my chest. All the loose brass falls out the back here. It's not ejected out. It actually just kind of tinkles out the back here and lands right at your feet in a nice little six inch pile. So it's perfect for cleaning up your range mess also. So being a bullpup, the magazine inserts down here on the bottom. It charges uh, HK style from a lever up front and it's ready to rock and roll. All right, so let's go over this real quick from front to back. You know we're going to start with a butt, right? This is OG. It's got a uh, fixed butt stock here with a rubber, a little rubber cover on it. It does not slide. The original did have about uh, two inches of play here where it would slide forward and back. I, mentioned, I showed you earlier the little magazine release there, a bolt release, no pistol grip. So that makes it uh, perfectly legal in California. And then it's got a cross bolt safety, just like 
every rifle and shotgun that, uh, other than Mossberg, <laughs> that uh, we've ever seen out here. So, pretty cool. It com comes with only this little 10 inch long, 12 inch long pieces of, piece of rail up here. So I added Magpul backup sights. Um, you all might have gone and seen our good friend uh, Buffalo's Outdoors. Um, Buffalo, big fan of the channel, and we're a big fan of his channel. He recently reviewed this Vortex AR Optic, one power optic. So go over there and take a look at this thing. But I was sold on it when I saw his video. So I ordered one up from Optics Planet, bolted it on the top there. So very nice little uh, optic for this length of rifle. Um, one thing I should point out to this bullpup rifle, as most of you know, bullpups take all of the action from a rifle and put it back under your armpit. So the action on this rifle is clear back here. It spits out the rounds clear back here and there is a 20 inch barrel. So this is getting the same ballistics as a full length government model uh, M16 or AR15 or uh, AR A4. So it's got a uh, much better ballistics on that little 5.56 round when it's flying out. But the barrel is all tucked back here underneath your armpit. So it makes a very short little uh, manageable package, which again, perfect for the house, perfect for uh, using in out of the car, deploying out of your vehicle. So, all right, so if there's one drawback to this weapon system, it's the fact that to chamber check this thing, which is an important part of uh, toting around any rifle, you have to remove the magazine, you have to turn it over so that you can view inside of its little ejection port there, and then you have to run the bolt back. And when you lock the bolt back, you can see up inside of there, and you're actually looking at what looks a lot like an AR-15 bolt, but you have to look up inside. So you can't chamber check a loaded weapon for functionality, for getting ready to go into a house or something, with a loaded magazine in there. So you've got to know that it's empty, insert your magazine, and then I'm going to slap the bolt down, and I know it's loaded now because I've just watched a round from this perfectly California legal 10 round magazine. This is a Lancer, Lancer magazine. They, had, they were running a special on red ones, so I thought. That's kind of cool looking. I, I like need a little, little color in my life. Yeah. So yeah, Lancer magazines are really good magazines. They're actually uh, better than your P mags, and of course they're better than your aluminum uh, military magazines. Very durable in all temperatures, and then they come with metal feed lips, so you're not beating up the feed lips over ah, time. Ah, like spring steel, it looks like. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Or in the fall, you can use them in the fall, too. So, <laughs> so anyway, folks, overall, it's a great little workaround for us in California who live behind the granola curtain, and we're forced to either modify our AR-15s or buy a different kind of weapons platform, such as a Mini-14, which I'm not a huge fan of, or something like this. This is nice, compact, and can do all the work that an AR-15 can with very little uh, getting used to. There's a little bit different uh, manual of arms here, but as Danny pointed out a little bit earlier off camera, its shoulders very nicely, comes right up to the shoulder, and it's very maneuverable, so. I guess, I guess they didn't realize that humans have hands that articulate, you know? <laughs> That's true, so you're gonna ban the pistol grip. All we're gonna do is turn our hand back to this way, which is actually the way rifles were built for hundreds of years before we got to the pistol grip. So I think we can adapt, improvise, and overcome. And California, this one's for you. The evil black rifle has taken on a new costume and we'll be riding around in the OG's truck from here on out, so. Good times. I hope you enjoyed the video. This video was made possible by our generous Patreon supporters and also our YouTube channel members. Without the support, we wouldn't be able to make videos at all. And just to give you a little heads up of what's coming up, we got these green and red uh, 12 gauge incendiary tracers. Uh, these just came today. And I'm hoping to be able to film at least a couple of these in low light conditions. I'll have to do a little research to figure out when these were made and if they're even available anymore. Another project are these large uh, Fury slugs, which are similar to the uh, green slugs, but these are actually are made out of lead with a copper jacket. We loaded one in a brass shell. It's a pain in the butt loading it. It's so, so much easier to load it right into a normal plastic hole. But we have enough of those that we'll be able to actually do some longer range tests with those, which will be good. And then finally we have the 
uh, compressed toilet paper slugs from Finland by the hydraulic press channel. Still haven't received those yet, but I'm sure they'll come through. Anyway, that's what we got coming. Thanks for watching.